Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we have, we have with us Dr. Pranab Sen, who has been the Chief Statistician of India and headed, headed the National Statistical Commission. We are going to discuss the back series, Pranab, with you and uh, the back GDP series, which has been highly controversial at this stage. You had earlier defended the new method which the CSO had used for calculating the GDP and the fact that the GDP therefore changed from what was the old basis of calculating GDP. Now you have started calling this the latest back series which has been produced as a Nithi Aayog series. Now why are you sort of, shall we say, changing your views on the method or the back calculation? In this case? Well, you know, I haven't really so much questioned the method. I have questioned essentially the modality through which it appears to have been done. Niti Aayog seems to have played a rather important role in it. There is no justification that, other than that that I can think of for Niti Aayog not only sharing the same stage but actually taking the lead. In and the the IOG has nothing to do with the statistical nothing office of the at government. All. In fact, the whole idea of inventing the National Statistical Commission was to provide a buffer between the rest of government and the statistical system. Which is, it has to be independent. It has, has to, to be, be independent, independent of the rest of the government. And that's because you don't want the policy to be informed by, shall we say, the usual... Uh, things that happen to the government to make the government... Well, you see, if you think about evidence-based policy, it should move from evidence to policy and not from policy to evidence. And you think in this case this is what's well, happening? Well, you know, that is the suspicion which arises, and it's a very unfortunate suspicion because we've spent, since the 1950, we've been working assiduously at maintaining a distance between the statistical system and the political system. I think just with one stroke, that has been damaged, and damaged quite seriously, I think. So this is an institutional damage of the kind that afflicts both the RBI and the CBI at the moment. Well, you see, as far as RBI and CBI are concerned, they are both, in essence, instruments of the government, which means instruments of the political system. So political involvement in that, I think, is understandable. But one can debate it at length. This whole business of RBI independence is really a fairly recent invention. But independence of the statistical system has been there right from the beginning. And for good reason. That is, if the data that you're using has been doctored, then any policy that you're going to make will be driven purely by political considerations rather than evidence. by evidence. Now, coming to the back series, yeah. it seems to have, quote-unquote, deflated the uh, good years as per the old GDP series is concerned, and also seems to have brought up uh, Mr. Modi's period. In So far as a comparison can be made, the comparison seems to go all one way making the current period look better and making the, say, the previous period look worse. So is this just methodology or it's selective methodology? Well, let me put it this way. Uh, what has happened is that the current period has remained exactly what it was. That hasn't changed. It's the past which has been changed. So if you look at the data, you can break it up into three parts which are of relevance, which is 2004, 5 to 11, 12. 11, 12 to 14, 15, and 14, 15 and after. 11, 12 to 14, 15, and 14, 15 and after have not been changed at all. They're exactly what they were earlier. What has been changed is the 4, 5 to 11, 12. Hmm? Now, that is the backcasting problem. The question is that what is the appropriate methodology to use for backcasting? And how do you, what does one go about thinking it through? So the argument has been that the MAC 21, the, the basically the corporate sector's returns which were changed, what they have to submit, gave a whole 
bunch of new data and therefore helped the change in methodology. But this data didn't really ex exist for the past. Okay. And therefore, the problem of trying to estimate a back series when the forward series, in some sense, has been calculated based on a new source of data. That's right. Now, M uh, Professor Mandel has done a different kind of back casting than what the CSO seems to have done, as you said, under the leadership of the Niti Aayog, unfortunately. But uh, Mandel's calculation was really based on essentially econometric methods, so it was simpler and tried to do something which was in that sense made economic or econometric sense. How is this method that the well, let me Let method? me try and sort of explain this in a little more detail because I think it's necessary. See, if you think about GDP growth, it can come about from four broad factors. The first is new products and services which didn't exist earlier. Not, not captured, therefore. No, didn't, didn't exist, so therefore not, cap not captured. Exist. Right. Second is the growth in production of goods and services that exist earlier and it continues to exist now. The third is the productivity of producing the existing goods and services. And the fourth is improvement of quality, right? So there are four broad causes why GDP growth happens. If you think about these four, in terms of the indicators that pick them up, uh, those are very different. The physical volume is a relatively easy one. You're actually just measuring you know, the number of cars, the tons of steel, the tons of grain, and so on. For which we have For good which statistics, always. Always have had good statistics. As far as new products are concerned, everything depends upon how your statistical system is able to pick up a new good. Is there a methodology where if a company comes in producing a new good, you pick it up? That's not a foolproof area. It's reasonably foolproof for manufacturing, for services, not, not at all. Now, as far as productivity is concerned, productivity changes have always existed, and we've been measuring it in the past, but it has always been done in the years where the base has been changed. So, you estimated productivity in 2004-05, you estimated productivity in 11, 12. In the middle, you didn't. In the middle, when you were for going from 4, 5 to 11, 12, you are assuming productivity stayed constant. Okay? Then 11, 12 comes and you find a much higher figure. And much of that growth is because of productivity and quality improvement. So the story that comes out from the 11, 12, 4, 5 comparison is that 11, 12 shows much higher productivity than 4, 5. So the back series should have to take this into account. Now, this is the thing. Now, if you go, so let me now go to the way backcasting is done. The one thing you cannot change is the estimate of 4, 5 and 11, 12 at current prices because you're actually measuring it in that year. All right? So that is fixed. If you look at the new backcasted series, the current price series is almost exactly the same as it was. It's almost exactly the same because uh, the old series, when we had, uh, had estimated uh, forwards, had overestimated the current price. So when we got to 11-12, we found the GDP at current prices 2% below what had been estimated by the old series. So a 2 percentage point correction had to be made. That's been made. Otherwise, it's perfect. No problem. So that's the current price series. The real trick is, what do you do with the constant price series? 4-5 is at 4-5 prices, right? 11-12 is at 11-12 prices. Now, when you're doing back casting, you want 4-5 at 11-12 prices. Now, there are three ways of doing this. 
three broad ways. There are more. One way is to say, I will take the 1112 price index and I will simply divide the current price series by those price indices and get 4.5. That's one. The second, which is what they have, they said they have used, uh, is you take the volume growth over the period and you go backwards. So let's say 10, 11 to 11, 12, let's say was 5% uh, growth. So you'll take the 11, 12 and deduct 5% from that. And then you work back. The big difference between the two is that whatever productivity differences are happening, in the first method, if you go by prices, the entire productivity difference is attributed to production. If you go by volume, the entire productivity change is attributed to prices. Okay? What the Mandel Committee did is the third way of doing it, which is to say that you've got all these non-volume uh, uh, sources of growth happening, you know, quality. new products, quality, productivity. We don't know exactly when they came into existence. Uh, so what we do is we assume that this, these started at some distant past. So they chose 93, 94 as the distant past. And they essentially did a smooth curve fitting between 93, 94 and 2011, 12 of the difference, not the total, but the difference. And then just added it back to what the original numbers were. So, so that's a hybrid that, so between those So that assumes that the productivity or the quality improvement would have taken place over a long over period, a of, period time. of time. Over a long period of time. Hmm? And not a sudden adjustment. Not a sudden adjustment. So if you actually think about it, each of these things are appropriate depending upon what your take is on that particular sector. Now, in certain sectors, you may not have had very high productivity gains, and this you actually know from the data that you have, in which case the volume index is the right way to do it. But if the bulk of the growth is coming from productivity increases, then that's the wrong way to do it. Or new services. Or, or new, new services. services. You, it cannot be done. So it, there has to be a judicious selection. Applying one method across the board is a bad idea. The Mundell method, which is, again, it's the same method for across all sectors, has the advantage that all you're doing is redistributing over time. You're not taking a call on anything. You're saying, I'm observing a difference. I assume that this difference in 11-12 didn't exist at, let's say, 93, 94. And I'm just distributing it evenly over this period. So that's where we are. So at least it is a cross-check on the, shall we say, the any other method you use, because if you differ very significantly from what this is doing, yes. then you could be accused, shall we say, uh, at least conservatively, of having been selective in your choice of method. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, this discrepancy is rather stark. So if you look at what the Mandel Committee had estimated for, as the constant price GDP in 2004-05, and you look at the new series that CSO or Niti Aayog has come out with for the same year, the latter is 11.5% higher. 11.5% percent higher. That's a lot. So now if I take that 11.5% and distribute it over a six-year period, you're going to knock off a percent and a half each year compounded. Right? which is exactly what you're seeing. So it, it, if we do not want to, shall we say, attribute motives just for the sake of argument, then what could be, what we see is really try and take different sectors and then select a method which is uh, favorable to what you want to say at the end. And as we know, that this is the classical 
overfitting problem, as it were. You already have something in mind, and you then choose the statistics that support it. Could we say that this well, is Well, that's one. The alternative explanation is that perhaps you didn't take the trouble to really go sector by sector and ask what was the what were the principal uh, so determinants of the growth. Okay. Was it volume? But was it productivity? productivity? Was it quality improvement? But was it product? The question comes up to why would they not? Because you have headed the CSO, so you they, know how it works. Well, it depends. Look, you know this this thing has been going on for for many years now. See, two thousand and fifteen, the new series got released. In I think two thousand and sixteen, CSO had a, a set of estimates. This was discussed in the Niti Aayog under the previous vice chairman, who said that this would, he would not allow this data to be published. This is under Professor Pangaria. Under Professor, under, uh, Professor Pangaria, and so he said, "I am not going to 2016." So this was already the back series calculation had already been done, 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 but not this one. Not this one. Okay. Okay. So it then went into hibernation. Okay. It came out of hibernation because. The National Statistical Commission set up the Mandel Committee, and Mandel Committee actually came out with it, and this became came into the public domain. Okay, so okay. we had a set so of figures. Suddenly, you had a you had a set of figures, and if my memory is right, it more or less matched what CSO had come up with in, in 2016. 2016. This is not your time. No, I was that was the fag end of my tenure as chairman of the National Statistical Commission. So before I had a time, I. I admitted office. Now this happened what two months ago, less than two months back, uh, the Mandel Committee report. So now there was pressure, because the Congress had already taken this up and politicized it, saying that you know we are just so much better than you guys. You know we had double-digit growth our time. So within two months, this new series gets generated. Now the thing is that. We are talking about a four-year period, no, a two-year period. People have changed. Now, whether CSO had the time to again go back and look at it sector by sector and take a call on which is the appropriate methodology, or did they say let's just go to the extent possible with a volume correction? Uh, that's an open issue. Well, Only an insider would be able to tell. But well, my suspicion is that that's the easiest way to do it, and they may have just done that. And easiest way to maybe satisfy what the powers that be wanted, and that's why. Well, you well, let me put it this way: if you have a growth process which has been driven by productivity and quality improvement and new products, um, then using a pure volume approach would. Almost inevitably give rise to much lower growth rates, and that's what we see. And that's what we see. The last question, you know, that uh, you said that Pangaria stopped the estimates from coming out, but was it within his jurisdiction to do so, or was it in that sense the CSO accepting something that should well, have been accepted? Well, no. You see, the thing is that the it is entirely within the prerogative of the government. and it should be about release of data you can or cannot release or the timing of the release that is within the purview of the government and that's how it should be because ultimately you are releasing it as government what is unacceptable is government getting into the production of the data so what panagaria did in a technical sense is okay he said i will not allow this to be released okay okay he didn't say change the data but you know you know niti aayog is also supposedly an advisory body it's really not the government today of course unlike the planning that commission is you know so it's in fact the government's think tank if you will yep. unlike the planning commission which had a role which was far beyond that of just advice so in this sense it again goes Beyond what supposedly is the Niti Aayog role. 
Well, you know, the Niti Aayog role isn't very clear. I mean, you know, I think statements have been made that they are the single largest user of this data. Uh, I would probably contest that because I have yet to see any Niti Aayog publication which has used GDP data in any meaningful way. And today, any investment banking house uses GDP data possibly far more intensively than Niti Aayog does. So if you go simply by the, the heavy users of the GDP data, just bring in the investment bankers. They'll tell you what to do. <laughs> so what you're saying is Niti Aayog really is not today the primary agency which looks at... Look, Niti Aayog doesn't have a model. I have not seen any statement which has been made on the basis of an analysis of the GDP data. All of that, had it been done, so if there was in-house sort of ability to handle the data, to be able to identify uh, anomalies in the data, there would be some excuse. It's still not an excuse because the Niti Aayog may be advisory, but is inherently a political body. Appointments are political appointments. They are not civil service appointments. It's also interesting that Rajiv Kumar, I'm not going to contest his economic credentials, but has sort of taken upon himself the role of being the chief defender of the government on economic matters and contesting, shall we say, the leading economic figures in the world today, including Amartya Sen, and saying they don't understand the Indian economy. Well, you see, if you think about it, uh, as the head of the government's think tank, that's a perfect legitimate position for him to take. Um, because after all, he does head what the government has acknowledged as the think tank. Now, as I said, that also requires you to have established your credibility in the eyes of the general public as a think tank. Now, forget the tank, at least think. Yeah. So well, <laughs> well, the tanking may have happened as well, but <laughs> but you know, but that that that's that's at the heart of it. In, in the Planning Commission, for instance, and that's the big difference, the Planning Commission had, I think, every right to say we were the largest user of statistical data. You had a large-scale model. We were running every policy through those models. So, And these were being updated every time a new data point came out. So, it, so in Planning Commission, you had in-house understanding of the data. I would be surprised if Niti Aayog has anybody who has that understanding. I'd be vastly the surprised. Chief Tanker. Okay, <laughs> letting it go. <laughs> letting that go. Thank you very much, Pranab, to be with Not us. At all. And we will continue coming to you for explaining what data and statistics means for the Indian economy and for all of us. Sure. This is all the time we have today for this episode of News Click. Please do watch News Click. We'll continue to follow this and other issues.